Hello, I'm Simon. And I'm Dan. And this is the Wikicast, a podcast where Wikipedia takes us to a random article each week and we talk about what we find. Daniel, what are we talking about this week? This week, Simon, we're talking about Segway Incorporated. Oh, As nice. In the Segway. Inco- this might be this might be the best random article we've ever had. <laughs> because the, I mean the, the, there is nothing more random than a Segway, is there? The uh, trot's gone of uh, yeah, trot's a gone, yeah. Um, but yeah, so what, we, what we've got is, uh, founded in 1999, mm-hmm. which I didn't realise it was actually that old, um, Segway Incorporated is the manufacturer of the two-wheeled self-balancing Segway, the Segway Mini Pro and other personal transporters, founded by inventor Dean Kamen. Carmen. The name Segway is a homophone of uh, se- oh, Segway, a smooth translation literally for Italian for follows. And there you go. So how just, how I, is that a homonym? Like it, Homophone. The, Sorry, homophone. How is how is that a homophone? It's just the same word. Like that's what homoph. They know that's what it is though. But it's spelled differently, isn't it? S e g u e u e, s e g u e and s e g w a y. I thought they were spelled. I thought they were both spelled w a y. Oh, I've learned something today. There you oh, go. Okay, that's interesting actually. That the company has now just become so widespread because I can't have been the only, only person that thought that the transition segue was also spelled w a y. Mm. Ah, that's interesting. So the first have patent. You been on one? For, no, I haven't. But he filed the first patent in 1994 and granted it in 1997. Oh. So he put ages in of work into it. So the guy who founded the company, did he invent the Segway? Yeah. So he's an engineer by training? He's a inventor, apparently, yeah. Oh, you, so, so that's one of those job titles where I think if you were in school and you'd be like, yeah, I want to be an inventor. Like... The, what, good luck being the careers advisor for that kid because it, like how in my mind to be a, an inventor you have to be basically like Caractacus Potts and just kind of have a really weird life and have mm. a shed full of bits and bobs and be like Colin Furs from YouTube he is the son of Jack Kamen who's the an illustrator for Mad Weird Science and other EC comic publications oh what a cool family that. yeah he's an American engineer inventor and businessman he's best known for Segway so what else is he known for? Um, inventions. Let's have a look. Uh, in 1989, he founded FIRST, uh, which stands for For Inspiration and Recognition of Science and Technology, a program for students to get uh, people interested in science, technology, and engineering. Cool. That was his first one. Um, and then, uh, se- yeah, Segway. Um, I mean, presumably, Segway is the most, like, profitable thing he does this must be his like his bread and butter of his inventing mm. life by this point so apparently he came yeah it says here came was already a successful and wealthy inventor after inventing the the first drug infusion pump and starting a company auto syringe to market and manufacture the pump so that's where he used that that money to okay. put into um he also holds patents for technology used in portable dialysis machines an insulin pump and an all-terrain electric wheelchair. The, he, these are very different. Like he's 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 got like yeah, I'm really into my biomedical sciences and my uh, my my sort of pharmaceuticals, and also into wacky vehicles. Mm. Like the Venn diagram of those interests has no overlap whatsoever. So that's actually this this all-terrain wheelchair looks absolutely amazing. It's called the iBot, um, yeah, and there's a photo on his personal Wikipedia page of him in the um, in the White House with President Bill Clinton and. Uh, Cayman, the guy who's invented it, is in the chair, is in this um, wheelchair, using many. So the wheelchair uses many of the same gyroscopic balancing techniques that were put into Segway later on. How how do you spell iBot? Because I just spelled it E Y E B O T, and I got a bunch of stuff from Fallout. Yeah, no, um, lowercase i, capital B O T. Ah, right. Oh, that's that's not as cool as the thing from Fallout. I'll be honest, which kind of looked like a Sputnik type thing. I presu- oh, okay, that's pretty cool actually. Mm. Did you ever play? Because that was from Fallout Four, I presume. That was the kind. Oh no, no, I think it's in. Yeah, it's in Four and Three. Because you, we have Fallout Four, but neither of us have played it. Is that right? No, no, I haven't played it. Uh, no, Ed, Ed, Ed's played it quite a bit. He quite likes it. He's played all of the Fallout games, though, so he's um he's a big fan. But no, I haven't. I haven't played. Big it. fan of the post-apocalyptic mess. So you can see mm. that in his bedroom, really. Yeah, exactly. You know, there's a correlation. Correlation in this case does again mean causation. Um, and Horizon Zero Dawn was the other one that um, we've got, and neither of us have played, but he's devoured. Excellent game. He's completed that. Oh, has he at last? Oh, mm. Okay. Again, post-apocalyptic, kind of zero technology, 
very primitive. Ed's really taken his inspiration from his games. But no, I've never been on a Segway. It, it's it's been one of those things that I've always um I've always wanted to do because you see them like every major city it seems has like Segway tours now. Mm. Or like if you go to Centre Parks, you'll have like fleets of people on a Segway. I'm just I've always been a little bit put off by them. I don't know. They they seem I don't trust them. They look like you, sh- you should fall over. Mm, exactly. Which is was it? Am I right in saying that President Bush, as in Junior, um, fell off one when it was like it was like, oh yeah, don't worry, Mister President, it's completely impossible to fall off of one, and he just didn't turn it on. I want to say <laughs> no idea. I'm gonna hold on. I'll Google that. I just remember that that was one. Do you remember when America's president was an embarrassment, but it was for stuff like that, not mm. literally being a sex offender and kind of spewing hatred. Like it Straight wasn't a lot of simpler time. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah, what, a, just, cool, just what a cool guy. It's so no, he's not a cool guy, Daniel. Trump is not a cool guy. And I no. will not have anything like that spoken. You massive racist. Dean Kamen, you fool. Ah, yeah, no, he seems pretty he seems pretty legit. He's also that's of his his profile picture. <laughs> if that's what it's called. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um You're right, even, is, even coughing uh, and spl- I've edited them all out, but even coughing and spluttering all over the place. I'm not well because I'm doing many things. Uh all of the things. Uh, I never have any time to kind of, I ha- you know, everyone at the start of the academic year, everyone comes down with a bit of freshers flu. Um, I think mm. in just in this instance, I've not had any time to get over the flu. To rub it in, I was at work uh, yesterday and I had my free um, flu vaccination because they, if you want a vaccination at work, they had a doctor come in and admit all the... Um, the syringes and things and uh mm. i was like oh, i've kind of I've, as far as timing i f***ed this haven't i because i was just coming up i was just coming out of the cold and then they said oh yeah just bearing in mind it's quite a, it, you know some people have having have been having some funny reactions this year it's it's been bruising um for some and uh and yeah you'll you'll you can get a bit fluey after having the having the shot and i'm like oh great so i'm just going to exp- kind of continue my illness through for another week or so so I've just been doing a little bit of digging on set because mm. yeah, I was right. George Bush fell off a Segway in hilarious fashion. Right. Yeah. Okay. Now this is interesting. So, um, the, uh, what was the name of the guy who invented the Segway? Dean Kamen. Dean Kamen. Right. D uh, K A M E N. Right. So a guy called Jimmy Hesselden uh, bought the Segway company or Segway Inc. Mm. So I guess, you know, I guess he just took over the business stuff. And do you want to know, or do you want to guess how he died? On a Segway? Well, he was on a Segway for part of it. Well, uh, presumably he was on a Segway for part of it and then he was off and that's why he died. Well, as in, he, he, he rode his Segway off a cliff. Ah, yeah, not, not, uh, they're not great in the air, are they? Yeah, they're not really equipped for aerodynamics. Uh, no. But yeah, he, he, in 2010, he just, apparently it was an accident. If, uh, how do you accidentally... Like they're not go they're not fast things. No. Uh hang on, here we go. And it was a uh, it was in the morning, he fell eighty feet into the river wharf. Jesus. Ramming speed, uh some might say. Um <laughs> near Boston Spa and Wow, well, yeah, just pronounced dead at the scene. Jeez. And he had an estate worth three hundred and forty million pounds. Crikey. Just imagine that. Imagine that being the lawyer, because it's it's one of those deaths that you never. He's, he was sixty two, so you know. I guess there's a chance that he was going to die, but like, you just. I mean, not I think there's always that. a chance you're going to die, Simon. It's irrespective of age. Yeah, but I mean, as the probability as you get older, that probability definitely increases. Yeah, but yeah. like to being that lawyer, you're just like having a, a day, you know, just like your normal day, and you think, oh, I wonder how my client's doing. And then you get a phone call saying, by the way, you've got to divvy up three hundred and forty million pounds of assets. Mm. Like, at, th- at least he left a will. Like yeah, that's the point. Have you written a will? <coughs> Have I li- written a will? Yeah, given how you're coughing and spluttering, it seems like a good idea. Yeah, no, I think I should. Um, no, I haven't. I haven't written one. Because I, I, I was uh, one of our favourite YouTubers, uh, Tom Scar. He's my age, and he was talking about writing a will in his most recent vlog. Because I haven't done it either. I don't know if anybody I know my age has. I don't, I don't think many people our age do. I think it's something that you do, like when. I don't know when you when you take out a mortgage and you you know you yeah you have you have financial you're starting a family and you've actually got to think about or when you when you 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 reach a point where your estate or your 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 earnings holdings and assets are worth are worth enough that you actually have to consider where they're going to go. Well, um, this this leads me on to my next question, which is of course, what will happen to the wiki cast if one of us dies? Ah, uh, 
I mean, straight in with the cheerful topics of conversation on this Thursday morning. Um, <laughs> don't date don't... the episode, Christ. Oh yeah, crap. Uh, on this uh, Monday morning, on the because uh, you know because we just had Halloween last week. Yeah, Halloween twenty sixteen. Mm. Yeah, yeah, it was a good one, wasn't it? We're actually clairvoyant. <laughs> we're, yeah. we're just talking about stuff and, and hoping that it happens. We transcend both time and space. Um, I don't know what would happen. I think, out of respect, I mean, if 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 let's say if you if you died, More let's likely. just say. Um, I mean, yeah, as as you've already pointed out with probability. Um, although I imagine that the statistics would probably balance out given my current health. <laughs> um, I, I wonder what you were going to say there, given like your current. I don't know, like relationships just like you're likely to get stabbed or something i think i would i think we'd stop the podcast i'd just do it out of respect i wouldn't feel right doing it without you oh i would have i just replace you with someone and carry on (laughs) oh really okay you'd have to but think of all the um you'd have to you'd have to change all the the media for it you'd have to you know the whole dan and simon debate would have to be completely rewritten no i just get sue perkins on should we be able to carry on and no one would be able to tell the difference okay (laughs) I mean, I suppose if you died, I could always just give the elephant man a ring and see what he's up to. And yeah, you know, if he's, or that uh, guy he's from free. the Goonies. Just like, yeah. Hey, you guys. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's what you're talking about. No, no, I think if you died, um, I, I think if you died, I wouldn't want to continue the podcast because of all, all the all the memories. Um, it would bring up. It would bring. It would bring up things. I think. But like, if somebody just like started coughing in the middle of recording, I'd be like, <laughs> Dan used to do that. <laughs> you cough just like him. I had to censor all of his audio when I was talking as well. <laughs> That'd be weird. I don't know. I can't have... I don't know what would... I don't know what... It would be... I was just thinking, actually, just... I mean, say one of us did die and we stopped the podcast. It would be quite eerie just having these in the back catalogue, being able to listen yeah. back to... Because it's because it is so... Because it's... You know, I don't know if anyone can tell, but a lot of this uh, this podcast isn't really scripted. Um Shock oh, horror! Don't give it away. <laughs> um, but just to just to have it because it, with it with it being such a having such a conversational quality, I imagine that would be really really hard to to have and listen to if one of us one of us went one of us popped our popped our clogs, shrugged mm. off our mortal coil as it were. <laughs> well, I mean, it's one of those things where you will see now. I I've, I know at least two people on Facebook who are actually three people who are dead. And their profile's mm. just there. And it's and it mm. just stops, you know. Some cases you'll get like the parents will write a post saying sadly they've passed away or whatever. Um yeah. But it's it is so strange. And in a world where we treat the permanent as being ephemeral, mm. a sudden abrupt end, or even even like a kind of a gentle end, even if you because presumably we're getting to the point where people have had Facebook for long enough that it's yeah. the older demographic. Some people will just sort of die of old age. Um, yeah. And eventually, there's going to be like a digital graveyard. Like all the every social media platform. I mean, every social media platform eventually will be a digital graveyard, either because the people dies or the platform dies. Mm. Like I presumably still have like. Well, I didn't, you know. But for example, I you know a, a MySpace account. Like I think how many MySpace accounts are just in there in like a completely silent graveyard. Um, but and and I think YouTube is a particular example of that because it is so personable. And this podcast is, an, I view as an extension of that YouTube stuff. I suppose it's a bit like um, Esther, you know, the um, the nerd fighter that uh, Esther Day is named after. Yeah, um, you know, if because she left all of her video blogs up. Same thing with Tom Scar's friend um, Ed. Uh, you know, he died. Um, uh, it is weird, actually. It's something that, that, that online culture just simply hasn't been around long enough to really process. I mean, mm. we talked about the maturity of YouTube um, as a platform last time, but just sort of as a digital digitally you know are we ready to to have digital graveyards yet it's yeah kind of a- i suppose too it's it was one of the thing i th- one of the episodes i know we, we i mentioned it briefly in the last in the previous episode black mirror which is an mm. excellent series brilliantly brilliantly written um one of the episodes they talk about there is this concept of kind of you know it's 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 not uncommon uncommon in sci-fi but the whole um digitally uploading your consciousness and allowing to kind of persist after death yeah. in one way or another i mean how realistically how far are we away from that in in terms of kind of the rate of technological growth so you know think of how far we've come in the last century it's a weird thing though right because i think this actually ties into what i'm reading at the moment which is john green's i've got to say excellent turtles all the way down um mm. it, it, you know to, to upload just what's in your brain, like just the information that's in your brain, I think a lot of people would view that as being um, uploading your personality. But mm. 
It's not really. It's, you know, because you as a person are so much more than just the information in your brain. You are, you know, you contain multitudes. You have your um, bacteria that are within you that are constantly changing your brain chemistry and constantly changing your thought processes along with your diet and your food and everything. And I think you could argue that a, lo- a large part of consciousness is how you react to changing circumstances. And so to capture somebody as a snapshot wouldn't really be an accurate portrayal of them as a person. No, it's like the same kind of, it's touched on when, uh, I think it's, no, this is a test. I think Dumbledore is explaining to, (coughs) gosh, excuse me, (laughs) Dumbledore is explaining to Harry um, how coming back as a ghost works. Oh, yeah, yeah. Because he was talking about one, uh, whether Sirius would come back and Dumbledore. Oh, yeah, he he, he he would have been brave enough to choose the alternative Mm. yeah um and just how the whole kind of like it's not it is just kind of like a a projection almost like a projection and a reflection combined they're so not what the person was um Mm. it's similarly with um uh bringing people back with the resurrection stone you know the stories that the three of the the tale of the three brothers that that they they tell he brought his wife um, back yeah he brought his wife back and then um killed himself to join her yeah, because she cheerful wasn't stuff. at home. Cheerful stuff in, this morning. <laughs> she, she wasn't at home in the land of the living, yeah. I'm just trying to find, a, I'm trying to find um, a statistic for how much information content there is in the brain because that was something that I just assumed would be a limitation, would be that it's just too much information. Uh, but, I mean, there's something like 100 trillion connections between neurons, but I'm mm. not finding a... Uh, I mean, there's, I actually did a video about this. I don't know if you remember, about brain chemistry about how mm. you can never recreate the brain using just electronics because yeah. there are basically different kinds of current that go through the brain. But I don't think that, that would hold true necessarily for information. But I'm not... If anybody um, is an expert uh, in information content of the brain or neurochemistry or neurophysiology and you're listening to this, do send us an email because I'd certainly be interested to hear from you. Yeah, for sure. Uh, I'm just... Actually, I just... Uh, Hang on, I just found a source for the amount of information. Do you want to guess at the information content of the brain? What? How are you quantifying content? As in, like, story, imagine if it was an SSD and doing it yeah, by like, storage. How many, how many bytes? Um, 10 million terabytes or something. So, hang on, that's uh, 10 to the 18. You're actually in mm. the right ballpark. Yeah, the, the, mm. there's, a, there's an S. Obviously, it's not you know it's hard to quantify uh, it's hard to quantify but the estimate that i've just got from admittedly it's a forum is between 10 to the 17 and 10 to the 18 bits and uh, eight eight bits in a byte so uh, pretty close pretty pretty good guess considering you pulled it from out of your ass it's because well no i was just thinking about i've you know with I've, i've started my um over the last week i've started my tech technical specialist training at work oh yeah here we go so I've been I've been doing a load of you know. So that qualifies um, you to talk about the information content of the brain. No, it qualifies me to talk about hard drives, and then my perception of hard drive space, I think, allowed me to make a slightly more educated guess. Um, but the, yeah, oh man, there's been so many. There's been so many things. I've been, uh, I've been actually kind of been doing stuff physically in store, but a lot of the time it's been sitting in front of one of the computers backstage and and taking mm. quizzes and tests and exams and reviewing things and just getting my information up to scratch i mean it's um, quite telling that your thoughts go from a discussion of death to a discussion of your new job uh, mm. training at apple it's yeah it's it's a lot it's a lot to do but it's a lot of fun it's a heck of a lot of fun yeah it sounds it mate <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot of <coughs> it's a lot of fun. <clears throat> I'm an old, I'm an old man, and I've fallen over, <laughs> and I can't get up. Oh God, that's mixing references. Bloody hell! Yeah, yeah. That's a Red Letter Media reference for those of you who who don't watch Red Letter Media. You absolutely should, because if you like, basically, if you like listening to this podcast and you like our sense of humour, you absolutely need to to watch Red Letter Media. Um, also, it was a merging of that Red Letter Media reference and uh, Yog, uh, Yog one of the old Yogpod podcasts which is the, the original podcast that simon and lewis of the yogs cast did back when before the yogs cast was really really even almost a thing when they were their channel yeah. name was blue zephos and they were talking about world of warcraft years ago years ago actually because basically those i think it'd be fair to say that the red letter media and yogs cast are probably our favorite um collectives online to mm. watch 
um along and, and the Oscar cast is like huge there's loads of people in it including hat films which is how we kind of met uh, actually i wanted to, to ask you based off of <laughs> based off of the video which you might not have seen because i know you've, mm. you've been watching a lot less youtube haven't you recently yeah hardly a bit literally hardly anything i've been watching every now and then if i get if i have some time or if i'm in bed and i want to stick something on for 20 minutes before i sleep um it's been the new playthrough of uh divinity original sin 2 yes on the oh my god it's team double amazing. dragon channel which has been amazing it's such amazing. a good game two such dads game. and one old man who are just playing video games and we're, yeah. it's just us it's so good but no, well, uh, the question i wanted to ask you is hat films did a video recently it was a gta playlist where it turns out that uh trotty san uh, everyone's mm. third favorite member of the Oscar cast uh has doesn't use toilet paper he uses wet wipes to, to wipe his bum oh my god uh, my question, which I think I can guess the answer to, is: Have you ever done that? No. Oh, well, I have done it because, like, if you're in a situation where there isn't any toilet paper, then obviously that then a wet wipe has to be the next best thing. But I can't stand the whole kind of. Obviously, it's from a hygiene perspective, it's it's much better, yeah. um, you know, because the wet wipes are often antibacterial. They're not they're not just like wet tissues. Um, yeah. But the the feeling of moistness is not something that I could say I'm comfortable with. A moist anus. Um, a moist anus is not on my is not up there on my list of of well, desires. We don't put it up there. Like, like that's... Well, yeah, uh, that's actually where I've been going wrong. You just cheeky finger, just Whoop. yeah, cheeky finger. <laughs> <laughs> but, but like, what situation are you going to be in where you're going to have baby wipes but not toilet paper? I don't know. And um... you're in a toilet. Like that's it's it's not like you're just going to take a dump in the middle of you know boots. You might go into a public a, a public restroom and there is no. There's no toilet paper there, but if you're if you're a you know you're a dad out on the town and you're you're carrying around some baby wipes <laughs> for your kid, you might you might happen to have it. You know, in that situation, then I'm sure that it's. I mean, I suppose in that situation too, you could probably just put a nappy on, um, and go to town. Yeah, I mean, I mean that. Would... To be fair, I think if you were walking, if you were to walk into a toilet, like imagine you go to a really fancy, like swanky company. Uh, mm. Like for example, Segway, and mm. you go into the uh, the bathroom, and instead of having like toilet roll holders, there's just a butler who has a silver platter, and mm. he's like wet wipe, sir, and he'd like take whatever you think you're gonna need in the cubicle as you like go in. Like I'd be seriously impressed. Like I'd be like, oh yeah. wow, this is next level toilet, you know. Or if they had a, 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 like several options, like they yeah. had like regular toilet paper, baby wipes, wet wipes. Um, I don't know what else. Ferns, maybe like dock leaves. Fern um, cottons. I've actually used ferns uh, to wipe my my bum before. Really? Uh, don't do it. They, they are they cut. That's a place God. you do not want to. You don't want to cut. Also, ferns are notorious. Well, I mean, I would have thought that they're notoriously bad because the underside of a fern is just covered in spores. Well, that's I was that's how they like, reproduce, I, isn't it? I was in a section of Dartmoor where it was either ferns or heather, <laughs> and I was like, one's basically like a scrubbing pad that you'd use to mm. <laughs> you'd use to get like a particularly stubborn uh, saucepan clean, and the other mm. one was a fern, and I was like, well, I mean, it's not great, but I guess I've got to do it. You could just kind of you could just kind of like wipe your ass clean on a tour. Yeah, you, yeah, just like a dog with worms, just like yeah, find, find a pit- yeah, find a find a find a kind of weather beaten kind of edge of rock and just kind of nestle in. <laughs> and th- then you're going to make eye contact with some other poor group of ramblers that comes up, and you're just there, like kind of grinding, gyrating, <laughs> gyrating your ass against this rock, and be like, "You're right." <laughs> like, yeah, it's a good image. Out. It's a good image. You're claiming that tour as your own. No one's going to come near you after that. So we were talking about segways. <laughs> yeah, how do we, how the hell did we get here? I don't know. I mean, this is this podcast is partly. I think I think you could probably summarize this as like the Trinity podcast. It's three in one. It's the mm. article. It's the random tangents that we go on, and it's correspondence corner. And mm. I know that everybody has their own favorite part of it. I know, for example, Pixel Girl basically skips to correspondence corner, so she won't yeah. probably listen to this. Um, Fair. You know, which frankly, honestly, I can't blame her. Having it in the form, having kind of a a, a, a a kind of blessed Trinity structure fits with the Mormonism and Clark Tholicism, uh <laughs> religious sects of, of of the podcast. I, th- I definitely originally heard that as religious sects of the podcast, and I was ah, like, no, "Holy not. fuck!" <laughs> 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 
Holy fuck! Yeah, well done. <laughs> Sorry. I can't believe we've been we've been we've been chatting so far and we haven't mentioned Symphonic Evensong. Oh my goodness! Yeah. Tell you what, I could put in that snippet of what it sounded like. I was just going to suggest that. So for everyone who doesn't, so for those of you who um, perhaps forgot from last week or haven't listened to last week's episode and you're joining us for the first time. Also, um, incidentally, we, well, hey, we did two weeks in a row. We managed to. Smashed it. Um, we, uh, we, I sang and Simon uh, recorded a symphonic oh. evensong on Exeter Cathedral uh, this, this Sunday just gone. And it was absolutely glorious. Epic, epic music. Dyson in D, orchestrated by the brilliant David Davis. Uh, Elgar's Give Unto the Lord with two choirs. Uh, an orchestra and basically a tenor section that any large choral society would kill for in the work. That's that's directly quoting Tim Noon, so you know it's good. Here's a snippet of what you could have heard if you were there. Didn't that sound great, Dan? <laughs> oh, wow, what a what a oh, epic, just epic! It was so cool, it was so much it's, fun. It's it's literally I've compared it to other recordings on YouTube, which only have the organ, because that's the other mm. thing to point out is a lot of this kind of music. You did it as an anthem in a service the previous week, is that right? But just yeah. with the organ, yeah. and yeah. with an orchestra, it's so powerful. Like, mm. uh, how high does that go, by the way? Is it an A or is it a G? It's an A, yeah. Oh, it's, it's just as you say, the tenors smashed it out of the park. Mm. Um, and the whole thing I'm basically editing all these videos together because I imagine for you it was a mostly fun experience oh for sure because well certainly for with the exception of the psalm which um, was John John Rutter and it was <coughs> sorry just just awful um, yeah, it sounded it quite so nice cringe. it sounded quite nice did it? here's a snippet <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm just going to fill out this podcast with as many uh, clips from it's like a clip show I'm really I'm really hoping that when you rev- when you're reviewing footage, you need to try and see if you've got a camera on the choir in the final Amen of the Magnificat of Dyson and D. I believe you I need did. to see this because you need to zoom in on me, and I am singing so loud. The sops and al- the sops and first sops and the first tenors go up to um, a top A right before the final kind of uh, resolving chord, um, and I am singing so loudly. I don't know if you've experienced this phenomenon before, Simon, but certainly when I've kind of pushed my top range, not only not in terms of just kind of 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 the kind of the pitch of the note, but the volume, mm. I can't control what my lips are doing <laughs> at all. As in, so I'm singing Amen, but my lips are going oh 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 like it just sounds ridiculous. <laughs> and I, I remember like I'm gradually getting redder and redder and redder in the face. So if you review this footage. Keep an eye out for me and you'll just see me pulling the most hilarious, just absolutely losing it. I'm basically about to take off. That's what's happening. Well, I, I can't include the footage in this podcast, but I can include this clip of the end of the Magnificat. <laughs> I mean, the whole thing was just insanely stressful for me because I was basically trying to do four people's jobs at once. Like I was, Mm. I did not have the equipment 
to record it properly. So this the audio rec- recordings I'm not happy with because basically we didn't have the space or the the um, equipment. And in terms of cameras, I was trying to man four different camera angles simultaneously, which yeah. was just impossible and there's not I think next time it would have made sense to probably say you know if we had that many tenors on the day anyway and I would have you know I I would have been I would have I I wanted to sing because it was epic music but if it comes around again and we're not doing it then I I probably would have made more sense to be like hey look we've got too many tenors as it is can I help man cameras and just to have a bit more kind of manpower on the floor, you know, <laughs> just to get around all the cameras. I definitely interpreted that as man cameras as the noun. I was like, can I help <laughs> old man cameras? <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, it would have been, it would have been a help. Like, cause certainly I was very limited just looking through the edit already. It's very limiting. Cause when you, for example, in my head, it's, it was going to be like uh, a recording of the proms or something. Uh, yeah. And if you actually break down a recording of the BBC proms on YouTube, it's astonishing how many camera angles there are. Mm. Like, there's at least two or three different camera nests, and with each in within each nest, there are several cameras. Whereas yeah. I was basically, I was, I think you saw when you walked like processed past me, I was dual wielding these cameras on tripods, mm. like trying to move them around <laughs> simultaneously. <laughs> Uh, it was a bit nuts, really. But it... It'd be cool to see. Um, I think, given that it hasn't been recorded before, whatever whatever product we get, people are going to absolutely love. So, yeah. it was in that it was, sense, it's a win win. To be in the building was an experience. So, hopefully, we just got to try and communicate some of that, uh, some yeah. of that sound uh, mm. in the recordings. But yeah, speaking it, it, of, it was... of to being in the speaking of being in the building to be a success, next Thursday, everyone, a week today. Oh, shit, I dated it. Oh, uh, for God's uh, sake, week... again. A week today in a year's time, yeah, saved it, yeah, nice. um, is uh, Exeter, uh, University of Exeter Singers. Uh, no, that's not our name. Exeter University Singers, there you go, professional. Uh, we're singing uh, we're singing choral even song in the cathedral. And last night at Singers Rehearsal, um, Dr. Jones joined us to give us an idea of what the organ's going to be like. And holy fucking shit, is it going to be epic, just epic. <laughs> I can't wait. I, it's gonna oh man oh man it's, it's been a be good so season cool. for music because of course yesterday as well you also did one of my favorite pieces of music which i was i was gutted i missed which was the mozart mass and c sparrow mass yeah which is here's a clip <laughs> we do i don't actually have a recording of it I'll, i will include a little bit which explains why it's called the sparrow mass <laughs> So those violins are the meant to be the sparrows. And it's really fun. Uh, like the older I get, the more I like Mozart. Um, but you guys did it with instruments, which apparently you're going to play the really you're going to play the Benedictus, right? Yeah. The blam blam blam. Yeah. Yeah. You did it with the was it University of Exeter consort? Um, I think that's yeah. I think that's what they're called. They're very good. We also did an absolutely epic. Um, the consort include and their two um, trumpets joined us in "Guide Me, O Thou Great Redeemer" in the final hymn. Oh, nice! And it was so loud. Like St Luke's Chapel isn't a very large chapel. It's a <laughs> nice, it's, it's lovely, but it was just like, oh man, we would have you could have heard us from Plymouth. You know, it was, it was so loud. <laughs> That's such a Devonian saying. It's like, oh, you could have heard us from Plymouth. <laughs> <laughs> Those yeah. big lads down in Truro don't know what hit them. Because I I had a bit of a crappy day yesterday. I was just getting like I was getting really confused by the the stuff that my code was spewing out, and I was like, mm. this makes no sense. And I came home just in time to miss the the service, and I'm yeah, mm. I was surprised I couldn't couldn't hear it from my uh, my new undisclosed location where I live. Um, ah, yeah, code sucks. PhDs suck. I actually just released a video before, just before this podcast uh, started recording oh, really? about uh, which I'm very worried people are going to take as being very pretentious. But so far, uh, the comments haven't said this. So, good. You know, okay. I guess I'll, that's I'll okay. be sure to kind of go straight in there and yeah, be like, pretend to sit out. Yeah. <laughs> well, I've actually, I could, God, I've like some of the comments I get. I've I've already put a video out before about my um my weirdest comments. Some mm. people are morons, and the longer you mm. spend on the internet, the more you realise that there are just morons all over the world. Um, yeah. Including what was it? I had one. Yeah, the, uh, am I on the video called A Day in the Life of an Oxford Physics Student? Somebody c- commented saying, what college did you go and what did you get and what did you study? Nailed it. Oh my God. <laughs> I 
I may as well. Can I? What I might as well do is just literally apply with a, a link to the video he just watched. Mm. <laughs> like, because oh my <coughs> god, I, I just give up. I really give up. Some people. Also, mm. when I pinned a comment when somebody said, um, "Are you going to publish your thesis so we can read it?" and I was like, "Okay, I'm going to pin your comment and say for the last time, yes, I will." And then somebody replied to that saying, "Can we read your thesis?" It's like, ah, why? <laughs> What? <laughs> I I'm losing my goddamn marbles. There are there are morons everywhere. The internet just gives them a voice. Yeah, it gives everyone. Most equal most morons waiting. are happy happy remaining morons and just keeping their moronic thoughts themselves. Um, yeah. Which is often what I do. You know, if I'll I'll every now and then I'll I'll think of asking something or thinking of saying something and then I'll play it back in my head and go, actually, that is just ludicrous <laughs> and did, I'll stop. You know, that was one of the first things i remember uh talking to pixel girl about i don't did i ever mm. tell you the story about the, st- the question she asked that was too stupid i don't know maybe but go on tell us again. basically we were at the MP, which is our favorite one of our favorite weather spoons the chef got up in my ranking gotta say mm. um oh, for sure uh, we were at the MP. Uh, i think this was before you were here and our friend uh peter and like our I was there and i'm musical director michael and live pixel girl and basically we weren't dating at the time and I didn't know her terribly well. And so she wanted to ask me a question and was like, Peter, can you tell me if this question is too stupid to, to ask Simon? And she whispered something in his ear and he just laughed and was like, yes, that's too stupid. And then like about an hour passed and we eventually wheedled out of her that her question was, have we ever done a manned mission to Pluto? Okay. <laughs> I just... <laughs> I mean, exciting question. It's great space to ask a question. Hey! A great space to ask a question, but uh, a very, very clearly answered with a no. But I just, it was Peter's original reaction. He just burst into laughter and was like, yeah, that's that's too stupid to to bother Simon with his time. Yeah. <laughs> like, I miss that boy. And I miss that girl. Uh, who is, she's visiting this weekend. Oh, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, I, I'm hoping to catch her um, sometime on Sunday evening, I think. But I don't have... Um, I'm away with Waycroft, so... Oh, you so you're not going to be at uh, Compton? Mm, uh, I think I am. I'm getting a. I'm getting a. Um, I'm getting a car back early. Right. Uh, well, I say early. Actually, no, I'm not. That's a filthy lie. I'm getting a train that gets into Exeter at five. I'm just making you shit filthy up. Filthy liar. Um, yeah, but we've got. I, I, I leave for Waycroft uh, tomorrow. Tomorrow evening, I think, at about five o'clock. I'm getting a lift with this one of the girls. This is your singers' from, uh, away weekend of, mm, of debauchery. Our away game. <laughs> your away game. Yeah. Uh, the University of Exeter Chapel Choir is away this season. Uh, yeah. <laughs> University, <laughs> University of Exeter one, Plymouth Cathedral nil. I don't. Is, does Plymouth have the cathedral? I don't even know if it has a cathedral. They've certainly got a bishop, haven't they? Yeah, they've got a cathedral. Okay, I'm not such a. I'm not a complete failure. It looks pretty unprepossessing. I'll be honest. It just looks like a regular old church. Um. Yeah, <laughs> I just like that the way the fixtures. And he, do, you remember, do you remember that guy who used to do? Because he retired, or did he die? I think he. I think he's just retired from doing the football scores on Radio Five Live, and he'd be like, "Oh right." And he could normally. What Dad and I used to do as a game was we'd be driving back from going swimming together, um, and we guess what the second number was going to be based on how he intoned the first number. Mm. So like Plymouth Argyle <laughs> four, West Ham nil. And, but yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, could just, you could just or if it was like um uh Tottenham Hotspur three Arsenal three like yeah, yeah, yeah. we could always always tell um was like, uh, how do we get onto this oh yeah um because I was uh, you're, you're hopefully gonna be there for Compline because what I was gonna say was I'm gonna try and twist her arm because I want to go and see um Dunkirk again and it's showing at the campus cinema uh, oh nice after Compline at mm. nine so. Uh, I'd quite like to see it again. Mm. It was a complete masterpiece. It was superb. I'm still, I'm still so keen to see um, Blade Runner. Yeah, Brave Runner. Yeah, because um, mm. you've, you've. Uh, we actually talked about this in one of the podcasts that got deleted last time, Baxter. Mm. Uh, well, two times ago. Um, but you have watched the original Blade Runner now, the final cut. Yep. And the you final liked cut. it a lot. Yes. Uh, whereas, and I've, and I've seen the original Blade Runner. I love the original Blade Runner. After my mum gave it to me when I was like. 14 on like a re- really jank VHS tape and it was the director's cut not the final cut but you know it, mm. I, I loved it even then um, and I went to see it on opening night uh, yeah. the new Blade Runner uh, it's bad luck to say good night on opening night but it is I, uh, but gr- great to see the new Blade Runner because I loved it uh, and if, if you uh, t- t- maybe if you could see it 
Do you think you can see it before we record the next episode? Uh, I'm sure I can try. Because what I think, can we do a glitzy special, the Wikicast and Friends review Blade Runner 2049, and we do our reviews, and we also read out, and we basically pretend to be Komodo Mayo, and we read out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah we'll read out our current, your, so if you have seen Blade Runner, or if you're interested in seeing Blade Runner, go and see it, and then <coughs> email us at spongyelectric at gmail.com with your review, and we'll do a mm. special, I'll do a jingle for it or something, we'll have like a special yeah. film review corner. And yeah. I'd love it if that became a regular thing because we both no, for bloody sure. love films. Um, oh, to best. give you my brief review now, I loved it. Um, really, really did. And I don't understand people that thought it was boring. It's you know, really interesting, ter- actually. I've been listening to, you know, the past the, 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 the past couple of weeks instalments of um, Kermode and Mayer's film podcast. Mm. Um, and there's been some really interesting criticism about Blade Runner. Namely, what, what crops up most often is that people just, a lot of people write in and have said, well, Obviously, not a lot of people have written in, but any criticism that that is written in, they say that they just felt it was too long and too rambling and too kind of caught up in its own, you know. Which Kermode obviously slaps away and goes, "You're chatting out your ass." <laughs> I mean, it's I, interesting. I think there's an argument to be said that it is too long and slow and pondering. It's two hours forty minutes, isn't it? It's a long. It is a long film, but I'll be honest, mm. I never felt like it was drag. Well, yeah, I never felt like it was dragging when I was watching it. I was conscious no. that like this is a slow pace. Like yeah. I was definitely conscious of that, but it didn't feel out the the pace didn't feel out of place because the when original film is very wor- slow. When you're world bu- yeah, when you're world building to the scale that you are in Blade Runner, I think it makes sense to go for a to to give a film a slightly slower pace than is normal because it adds to the expansive quality of the narrative you're constructing and the world that you're seeing on screen. Yeah, it, it almost the the speed um, almost creates a kind of an illusion of space on screen yeah. um, and kind of like the, the world that they're building to me to be even more to, to be even bigger and more full and more detailed because things are going that just that little bit slower i and think it would work i mean obviously I, I haven't seen it yet so i don't know I mean, but and that, i'm very keen that's a hallmark of the original and the original's world building I'm, as you probably would agree is yeah. f- fantastic like you oh, feel phenomenal. so entrenched um mm. and i think that this new one does exactly the same thing um i also think you could view it as being a reaction a reactionary film to uh stuff like michael bay for example stuff that is just bang 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 um yeah you know like if you were to clap um whenever you i think this was in komodo mayor whenever you, if you clap whenever there's an edit um mm. which is how american audiences watch films way um yeah. <laughs> uh, like in modern films like a michael bay it would be like bang 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 whereas with this mm. they really let it take its time and it's some i think it's um something like um christopher nolan also does mm. this you know it's it's what i would call the slow food movement of cinema like mm. it allows you to really seep into it and i just think it's mm. it's so much better and our boy our favorite director boy denis villeneuve uh Smashed just it. knocks it out of the park i I've, mm. i really want to see prisoners because every other film i've seen by him has immediately gone into my favorite films list like yeah. top top 20 because sicario you you haven't seen sicario is that right i have seen sicario yeah, did um, I not you... see it with you? Campus Cinema. I think we did see it together. Did we? Okay, I I, I couldn't remember. Oh, um... actually, no, no, no. I watched it. I remember you were, you were going on about it in chapel, and this is before we were we were very close. Yeah. So I watched it at home, and then I'm thinking of um, Eye in the Sky. Yes. Yeah. We were, oh my! No, that was a hell of a film. What? Actually, film? Who, who I haven't watched that in ages. I'd happily watch that again. Um, but basically, the point being, Sicario, I thought was phenomenal. Um, mm. I thought Arrival was fantastic. I thought Blade Runner was fantastic. And uh, yeah, there's Prisoners, which has one of my favourite actors, Hugh Jackman, uh, in mm. it. And so I'm very keen to to see that as well. Gavin Hood directed uh, Eye in the Sky. Gavin Hood, um, Robin's really shitty, underwhelming brother. <laughs> Uh, oh Robin, my steal from the rich, give to no. the poor. Gavin, oh, I just kind of, you know, do my own thing. You know. Oh my god, you're never going to guess what he also directed. What? X Men Origins Wolverine. Oh no. The one with Deadpool where they sewed his mouth shut. No. <coughs> oh wow, that is that is abysmal. Oh, well, that's that's wow. I'm so sorry. Moment of silence, everyone. For Gavin Hood's credibility. <laughs> how does a how does a guy go from directing such a, a crap film to directing what we thought was a real masterwork? I don't know. It- oh, no, I don't know. Well, we've actually been talking for quite a while, and we uh, I think perhaps we should move along. 
these aren't the droids you're looking for. Move along to mm. Correspondence Corner. Okay, so that oh god, <coughs> did you hear <laughs> well, that? That's staying in. <laughs> oh, brilliant. Okay, um, <clears throat> let's try again. So okay. we've got a first email here <laughs> from. Oh, you fucking fuck, I hate you so much. <laughs> It's like that. That really reminds me. When I was in year six, we we watched a film about puberty, uh, mm. and I, I shit you not, this film was called "Some of Your Bits Ain't Nice," and oh, wow. there was a demonstration of like you're gonna have some changes in your body, including your voice changing. And they said it won't sound like this. And for some reason, this king clip of a guy going hello <laughs> just like stuck in my head. Apparently, that doesn't happen. But apparently, they didn't count on Dan Moore introducing no. correspondence. <laughs> And I'm when I'm ill, anything is possible. Right, okay. <clears throat> okay. We have an email here from Trey, uh, going from uh, writing to Correspondence Corner. It says, Dear Dan and Simon, this is the white way. Don't at me, Simon. No, he says this uh, is the white right fr- way. <laughs> <laughs> greetings, greetings from North Dakota, United States. I'm a pre med student here in I'm a pre med sorry, I thought you said something. <laughs> I don't know what why I did. You... It's my favourite state, North Dakota. Uh, okay. I'm a pre-med student here in the States, and I just wanted to say that I really enjoy listening to your podcast while studying for my countless exams. You guys are true top lads. Thank you. I do have a question, more so directed at Dan, who we've decided is the more fashion-wise one. But Simon, feel free to chime in as well. How does one properly wear a suit, with or without a belt? How many accessories is too many? And what is your ideal break for, a, uh, for pant tailoring? Congrats on Dan on officially being an Apple employee now. And to Simon, your tweet about YouTube and uh, demonetizing your PhD vlog was top keck. <laughs> also, dogs are superior. Cheers, Trey. Um, always a belt. Never, never without a belt in a suit. Um, oh no, yeah, we differ on this because I never wear a, a I never wear a, a belt with a suit. Partly because I can't afford to buy a black belt at the moment. If you're tucking a shirt in, you have to wear a belt. It just looks ridiculous without it. I mean, if I actually know that I did tell a lie because I, when I recorded the Symphonic Even song, I had jeans and a, and a shirt and suit jacket. I did mm. wear a belt with that. But with suit trousers, I think because they are, it's just so uniformly black, I, mm. I, I don't think you need a belt. Often, to too, um, you know, like if you're wearing something like black tie where your tuxedo is done up, you can't see the belt. So. Yeah. I mean, probably get away a, with it with there. a tux, you're better off wearing a cummerbund. You know? As far as, and what is your ideal break for pant tailoring? I have absolutely no idea what you're on about. I, I don't know if that means like the, um, the like there'd the be vents like the if they were a jacket. Like, yeah, the, on, the, on the sides? Yeah. I don't know. I have no idea. We don't, we don't understand your fancy American ways. Yeah, jeez. Also, how many accessories is too many? One thing I would say is that it's very, if you're going to go for a pocket square, um, it's risky business matching your pocket square with your tie. Often you can buy them in sets. I personally wouldn't advise going for a matching, but that's yeah. just me. I mean, I don't, I don't really wear my suit with any accessories. Um, I, I think keep it minimal. I think with mm. a suit, part of the appeal of a suit is the fact that it is quite a minimalist outfit. Yeah, it's 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 simple, but it's sharp. Yeah, so don't overdo it with accessories like lapel pins. If you you know, like you see people with like rotary club ones, or mm. uh, with in our in our fields, like you know, you'll see like music pins or something. Mm. Um, maybe a pocket square. Um, yeah, d- I don't don't overdo it. I think one no. or two at most. Good questions, though, Trey. Hope we've answered them. Très bien. Très bien. Next one. <coughs> for f- sake. I'm sorry. Don't... I'm sorry. I'm ill. Oh, oh, look at me, how they all have pity on I don't know me. if you can see what I'm wearing. Have you see, Have you admired what I'm wearing? No, the readers can't see, but I can. Yes, you look like no, Mother No, I was talking to you, because obviously the readers can't see, you fool. <laughs> um, it's, a new, it's a new set of pyjamas I got from Marks & Spencer in my lunch break the other day. It's brushed cotton, it's green tartan, it's a ma- they're matching, it's a button-up shirt, and I also have a rug sh- over my shoulders just to keep me warm, and I've got my yeah, little like slippers a, on. Like a warden of the north, like a hipster yeah, uh, <laughs> Stark. Yeah. I'm a as, I was, as I was uh, as I was saying, we have an email from Alex Elg. Dear Monsieurs Moore and Clark. Well, nice okay. order. Thanks, thanks very much. First of all, thanks for doing the podcast. It's cool. I like it, and I've been an avid eye vigilant reader since the beginning. Great use of the word eye. Doesn't get used mm. enough. Simon's YouTube channel has been also been surprisingly comforting during the most stressful periods of the somewhat odd and convoluted general social science degree I'm currently pursuing at uh, Institut d'études Politi- uh, politiques de Paris, or Sciences Po for short, 
obviously, in the disturbingly picturesque town of Menton, nicely tucked in between Monaco and Italy. Oh, so I've been near there. I went to Nice with Pixel Girl. It's very nice. Very nice. nice. Um, very nice. Yes. <laughs> Having written two law exams today, I'm currently trying to convince my academic advice that it's absolutely necessary for my future and the survival of mankind that I'm allowed to study political science at Columbia during my third year. But I'm writing to you on the topic of your granted not too horrible pronunciation of Swedish. Hey, hey. we didn't, we didn't f- it up <laughs> Woo. completely. I mean, he did say it's not too horrible. That's like a, a, mm. a C. Uh, on a great scale. There are people from about 50 different countries on my campus, all pretty much equally bad at pronouncing Swedish words, and all pretty much equally terrible at realising that the dots above letters, as you pre- briefly noted, actually affect pronunciation. Since I failed miserably with my summer project of learning to write in IPA, I'm assuming that's Indian, Indian, Indian pale, pale ale. Yeah. That sounds like a great way to write. Uh, I'll provide a handy pronunciation guide using French. Alors, A with an uh, uh, a, a sort of like a circle over the top, uh, which to me is the Angstrom symbol, is roughly pronounced as the E uh in Darnit. Oh. I thought... I, oh, right. I, I read that as E uh, as in, like, the French for water. So, Darnit. Ah. ah. Hmm? Oh, okay. No, no, no. So, I think, I think Darnit is a French word, so it would be, it would be Darnot, right? I, 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 oh, this is confu- Yeah. I think, an, I think an IT in French at the end of the word sounds more like an E. Uh. Dana, like um, oh, you know, I see. We were making... He's get, he's referring to that, right? So yeah, Dana, Dana, yeah. and uh, a with a oh god, is that a squiggle on top, or is it a little? It's a squiggle. It's a circumflex. Yes. Yeah, I believe so. Um, is roughly pronounced as the a i, uh, in Marie. So, ah, and then o with an umlaut, uh, two dots, is roughly pronounced as the u uh, in. This is the. I don't know how to pronounce the French words. Yeah, this is a, there's a fault here. I think I think it's the e uh in per, because uh, I think I always remember that um, the umlaut makes it sound like you're speaking Dwarvish, like it just lowers the vowel. Hmm. Um, <clears throat> oh, he he's actually attached an audio recording of how the sayings are supposed to be pronounced, albeit in my Swedish accent, which is a remnant of Eastern Danish rather than Swedish. We have such hmm. a multi multicultural um, audience. We're like the anti Brexit. We're the uh, best. Right, I will include that pronunciation link. Here's a clip. Jag fick en tupp i halsen. Smaken är som baken, delad. Han gled in på en räkmacka. Och finns det hjärterum, finns det skärterum. Back in the studio. <laughs> Wasn't that great, Dan? Which you clearly oh, Amazing, amazing. Put us in this place, tell you what. Uh, anywho, keep up the great work, Alexander. P.S. For some reason, I relate a lot to Dan, despite me being about twice his size. Oh, thanks, man. Thanks, Alex. It's not hard, to be fair. P.P.S. Cats, thank you. And then, possibly, my favourite uh, P.P.P.S. we've ever received. Have you seen the B-movie trailer in Old English? It sounds like an Anglophone trying to speak Swedish. Uh, well, we're obviously going to tweet the shit out of that. We've got an email here from an Irish correspondent, and... My God, I don't think I'm ever going to be able to pronounce your first name. I'm so sorry. Go for it. Uh, Go on. They st- oh, well, they say I can call. They say I can call them Finn. So I think I'm going to go with Finn. We have an email from FN two one eight seven. Oh, for God's sake! Come on, come <laughs> on! You're pilot. better than that. Hi, Dan and Simon. Long time reader, first time emailer. I've been listening to your podcast on a weekly on weekly park runs recently. Oh, nice. Hey. And for some reason, it seems to be helping to improve my times. I'd replace your choral and geeky, uh, and general geeky banter over my previous playlist of motivating, motivating, motivating running music any day. The Therefore, I must insist you continue producing. Shine bright like a diamond. Shine, shine bright like a diamond. Like a diamond. <laughs> I like the idea that people are running, listening to us, as in you're literally pretend that we're right behind you, and we have like yeah. one of those sofa. Um, motorized sofas yeah and we're just having a chat directly behind you and you're trying to get away from us yeah if this has already been asked excuse me for forgetting but where did you get the title music from i love it thanks a million i'm gonna try it uh uh fionwala finwala yeah that'd be how it's it's spelled f-i-o-n-n-u-a-l-a Answers on a credit card. Um, cool, no? We got the music from Google's library. It's uh, mm. um, I can't remember what it's called actually. I'm, I'm going to have to. 
look it's up. green something isn't it greenery yes greenery by silent partner which God. is free to use which is precisely what a good memory i didn't even look at anything i just have i just know it's associated with something green don't ask me why and i i look it up every uh every every week so you know <laughs> my memory's just like a sieve so it's the green it's the green it's the green you need and in your timeline it's the green that i see hmm. what's that from i've no idea princess and the frog ah uh. It's from Friends on the Other Side. I haven't seen The Princess and the Frog. I've not either, actually. Um, But it's from the middle of uh, uh, Friends from the Other Side. And he's talking Uh. to the prince about how he needs money. But it's the actual... It's Keith David who's doing it. He's so cool. Um, But he's like, it's the green, it's the green, it's the green you need. And in your future, Uh. it's the green that I see. Uh. It's a a great villain song. I'm a big well, fan you know, of Disney everyone. songs. Also, did you know um, Tim Blaze of Acapella Science, if you're listening to this, hi Tim, um, he sent me a link. There's a Broadway musical of The Hunchback of Notre Dame. Really? Yeah. I did not and know that. The music is so cringe. Really? <laughs> like, it's, like, at the start, Frollo is one of two brothers, and it's like, uh, oh, it's the same themes from the film, but it's like, oh God, I, 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 I heard the chorus kick in, and I was just like, no. I'm going to go into my musical shell because it's mm. so Broadway. It's like listening to the recording of um, uh, Phantom of the Opera. And, and oh, you're right. just like, oh, God, this is cheese. It's like having yeah. Edam poured into my ears. <gasps> That's one for the compilations that people will inevitably make of a weird shit we say. <laughs> We've got one here from Rahel. I guess. I guess. R-A-H-E-L. Um, hey, you two. I was just listening to your, uh, your latest Wiki Wikicast episode, episode 12, um, while cooking myself some delicious mushroom and celeri... Celerica? I think she means celeriac. Or maybe yeah, celery. Uh, to be fair, you're, you are, she's typing like you're speaking today. <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm I don't not know well. Okay, I have an excuse. <laughs> Um, and laughing at your rant about the lost episode when suddenly with no warning all at all Simon came up with the brilliant hide and seek Google Cardboard idea do it love the podcast Rahel we definitely right. want to do it say no more I, 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 it's funnily enough I actually bumped into a friend of ours Ellen in the forum uh, yesterday um, tried out an Oculus an, an Oculus Rift the um, uh, what's it called VR goggles and I was just like yeah with Google Cardboard we could definitely do this so in the future uh, we will. I'll buy a bunch of Google Cardboards and we will I don't know when it's going to be, but we will do it, I promise, because mm. I think it's a genius idea, because I came up with it. <coughs> You're right there, mate. Mm. Next, we have an email, a somewhat judgmental email uh, from Clara Otto. Uh, Dear Messrs. Moore and Clark, I've been a long-time reader from your podcast, first-time writer, but I'm in line to write to you guys, so here it is. First of all, I'm going to side with Dan on the dogs versus cats debate. Yeah. Now, actually, well done, uh, we ha- I haven't mentioned this yet. Did you see my Twitter and Instagram and Facebook? Because I was quite proud of this. I got used as a climbing frame by a random cat the other day. No, oh, I did. I did see this, yeah. Literally, this amazing thing happened where I was just, I knelt down to pet this cat and he was like, oh, hello, you're friendly. And I, as I knelt down, he just jumped up on my knees and I was like, oh, you're quite friendly. And then he just jumps up on my shoulders mm. and just bids me to like walk around. <laughs> if I'd if I not leant over and basically had to move him off, he would have probably just come home with me like a parrot mm. on my shoulder. So... <laughs> Don't get dogs doing that now, do you? Um, I'm actually just contacting you. Back to Clara's email. I'm actually just contacting you to tell you how appreciative I am of your podcast. I'm currently in a car on my way to Darmstadt in Germany to go visit some unis. Your podcast is one of the things that makes the travelling quite a bit better. So that's good. We've been... Apparently, we are quite the travelling companions. Mm. We've had quite a few people email in about this. Um, She continues, I am, as you could have guessed, part German. My dad's German and my mum's Italian, but I live in France or Switzerland. Yeah, it's complicated. Again, international audience. Uh, I am able to speak pretty fluently four languages. So here I am listening to your podcast and, uh, parentheses, nearly laughing out loud at some of your pronunciations of some foreign words. French. She's going to grade us. Uh, This is an episode 10, and she's grading us out of 20, just to throw some numbers at you. Uh, Simon, 13 out of 20. Great effort, but I'm still not sure how you came up with the pronunciation of some of those words. Uh, Whereas Dan, 15 out of 20, A plus for effort. I could actually understand most of the words you said. Smashed it. (sighs) God's sake. I mean, there's not that big of a difference between us. But we both need to improve. Yes, we both need to work on our pronunciation. Is that an I or an L? I think it's an I think it's an L. I can't okay. see it. 
I can't either I can't see. It's, a, it's either a capital I or a lowercase L. There are so many different pronunciations depending on its connection to the other letters, so I don't blame you, but it's a nice try. Uh, in German, Chen, uh, this is your point about the suffix, mm. is actually there to project the size of the object, or it's sometimes used to mean cutify something. So they usually go together, uh, you know, when it's small, it's cute. Um, so you are correct, like in, like mm. in Dutch. Uh, so awesome. I, my, my two years of studying German, may as well have just forgotten them. Uh, also in German, the W is generally pronounced like a V in the English language, such as in love. Uh, there we go for the linguistics. Do you mean lower? Uh, ah, God. God's sake. Um, there we go for the linguistics I, 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 incidentally I am a big fan of how much uh, linguistics there are There's, well, has crept into our podcast because I love mm. linguistics and communication um, Definitely. and a linguist comes to think of it um, uh, basically she's saying uh, as for the rest of the podcast very funny, much entertaining, wow uh, I've mm. been binge reading it like it and it's just great and i'd be extremely pleased to participate in the patreon when it's possible to we've had a few emails about the patreon some of you we realize are students and can't contribute you know we are students we totally understand that uh, but it's really mm. great to hear that some of you would be willing to put literally only a dollar a month um just to cover mm. our hosting so we it's will amazing. make moves on that but we're not going to launch until we can do it properly so you know yeah it won't be for a few i'll weeks. start looking into um i'll start looking into that today actually after we finish recording of course yes because you have a day off I have, had a, I have a day off. It's the first day off I've had in like two weeks. I'm, that's why I'm in my pajamas, enjoying the day. It's been amazing. <laughs> Thanks very much for your email, Clara. Uh, she does say, "P.S. Good luck on the final stretch of your PhD." Thank you. I am dying here. Today's actually been an okay day because uh, I've only done like two hours work, and it's one. Um, but uh, yeah, it's going all right at the moment. Uh, PPS, I thoroughly enjoyed the discussions on geek culture. Well, you're in luck. We had a discussion about death, which was similarly serious this time around. Um, I don't think I'm a geek myself, but I have been shamed for reading the Harry Potter books. Oh, at her age. F*** them. No, that's any age. Harry Potter is just... Ugh. Oh, did I talk about last time I went... To, did I talk about my visit to the Harry Potter store? on Oh, you Harry didn't know. Mm, I went, I was in London for a thing and uh, <clears throat> I uh, got into King's Cross station and on my way going, going back to Exeter, I was at the same station and I got there about an hour and a half early just so I could make the most of the <laughs> nine and three quarters shop and I didn't buy anything, but my God, did I want to walk out with everything. Because <laughs> it yeah, it's, it was there a huge queue for the trolley stuck in the wall? Yeah, massive. Whereas when I last was there, I was going to Cambridge and it was ludicrously late at night and they actually take the trolley away. Mm. Like it's not fixed to the wall. They just m- remove it so you don't get those cheeky free pictures by coming in the station <sighs> late at night. In capitalism, man. There you go. We've got an email from Emily, which is a really cool um, spelling of it, actually. It's E-M-E-L-I-E. Um, Hi, Simon and Dan. I was listening to one of your podcast episodes where Simon talked about when he biked into the bin. I did a similar thing, <laughs> only that it was a rose bush. My mum and brother laughed at me. Oh, no, at least bins don't have thorns. <laughs> Any, anyway, just wanted to say that I really enjoyed your podcast and I'm listening to it on the way to university. I'm currently studying environmental economics at the University of Gothenburg in Sweden. Wow. Oh, cool. Um, also, dogs are much better than cats. I was bitten by a cat when I was little and I've not trusted them since. Me too. <laughs> Uh, I have attached a photo of my dog. It's a giant schnauzer. And wow, right, what bragging. a dog. What it's a, a dog. That's a good boy. Look at him. Yeah. I, I must say that, that your suit. Swedish in the last episode was very good. Another saying in Swedish is... Oh, it's that one. That one that I like. Fins et charterum, fins et starterum. Um, yeah. If there is room for the heart, there is room in, for the arse. Uh, the saying with the... Rakmaka. Rakmaka, or shrimp sandwich, means that the person had everything handed to them without any hard work. Oh, I see. Ah, gotcha. oh, this is interesting. <coughs> also, I love your surname, because I definitely want to read it as arse brink. Mm. <laughs> sounds like the top bit of your arse that like, you have to be protective over if your trousers start slipping. It's like, oh, your mm. arse brink showing. Uh, but no, I think it's... Thank you, Emily. Uh, is, uh, actually, how do you pronounce that? Because it's got an umlaut, I think. Um, em- Emily... Us, Usprink? Yeah, I think it's a shorter A, isn't it? Usprink, maybe. I don't know. Thank you, Emily. Matthew Chase's uh, email. <laughs> Do it. <laughs> He's just sent us an email with a subject, Patreon, 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 and the email is just a picture of old uh, Sheev Palpatine with Do It. <laughs> so, all Sorry, right. not Do It, but Do It. Do it. <laughs> yeah, nice. Yes, thank you very much, uh, Tim Sustverner, uh, to the honoured Claw and Mark. I quite like That's that. That's pretty good. Does that count um, as the right order for both of you? I suppose it does. 
Yeah, it does it floats my boat. Claw and Mark should be our like tribal names if we ever go like <laughs> you know, like post apocalyptic kind of you know. That's our clan. Oh, actually, I did want to talk, talk to you about this because I'm I, can't, I did tag you in it, but um, you know, there's a an, a mod being developed for Skyrim at the moment that's like Skyrim cooperative mode. Mm, can we mm. both? Can we do a playthrough on Spongy and Electric as two barbarians called Claw and Mark? Yeah. Also, if anyone wants to write some new fan fiction about the two barbarians or two Stone Age men, Claw and Mark, that'd be amazing. The thing that'd is, be so Mark cool. is just a normal name. I feel- yeah. <laughs> I, don't know, I kind of like that though, because that would be like one of us would just not fit the time at all. Well, so like you're between the Paleolithic and the Mesolithic, and like yeah. Cl- Claw is like the really traditionalist, and Mark is just like, oh, you got to use these these really flint chipped tools, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Anyway, uh, so so Tim has said, I absolutely love your podcast. It's become part of my weekly and mostly daily for back issues routine. Uh, I would like to thank you for making every day a little brighter. Well, you're very welcome. Mm. Even though a view of an overly tired student on the way to a lecture suddenly laughing out loud might be a little disconcerting for other students here. All right, I love this idea of making people just burst out laughing. Mm. Um, your attempt at pronouncing Germanic... Oh, sorry, German words last night was highly entertaining despite lacking some accuracy. Very brave attempt, though. Um, mm. Considering that the last description of my native tongue I heard was, "It's like German wants to prove it's smarter than you," <gasps> which, to be fair, the the um, a description of English I've always been told is "Welcome to hell," like just nothing really makes any sense in English. Um, yeah. Anyway, dogs for the win. Cats are the literal spawn of Satan. Well, wise words, Tim. Wise words. Speaking of heated internet debates, though, as Dan uses Apple products and Simon relies on a weird mix of Linux, Windows, and Android, that's not that weird, uh, would it be possible for you to explain the reasoning behind you choosing the respective platforms? I'm deeply personally, uh, sorry, personally super deeply invested into the Apple ecosystem. It would be interesting to hear your respective reasoning. Why are you an Apple fanboy, Dan? Don't say it's because it let you play WoW. Um, well, this is the thing. From a gaming perspective, um, Apple is really not helpful. Um, the vast majority of PC game releases are not compatible on on an Apple um, on on an OS X operating system. Um, however, they're doing this. They're, they're doing great leaps and strides into kind of reaching out now that Apple's kind of the tech within the machines, namely the graphics cards and processors, are getting kind of stronger and stronger and better and better. Um, I've we ha- we had a you know we started off on a Windows PC and then I think at the age of I would have been maybe seven, the family moved to Apple. I then grew up with Apple. I like their kind of ethos. Um, I like their kind of attitude to how their operating system works in that if it's super complicated and for a daily user, if they don't need to know that information, Apple won't show you unless you specifically ask for it. Where I, whereas I think with, with Windows and Android, there's far more kind of like, do you want to do everything? Okay, do everything. And I think that that can sometimes limit its um, accessibility for the general yeah. public, which is why Apple is so popular with, you know, with, you know, students and um, kind of an older demographic too. It's just more intuitive to use. I was told by a teacher once that <clears throat> with Apple, it's... Um, with, oh, sorry, to start with Windows, it's easy to do the basics on Windows. Anybody can. But the mm. rabbit holes go very, very deep if, you're, mm. if you know where to look. Whereas with Apple, um, it's a bit like a shallow ocean in that everything is laid out for you. You can mm. um, very easily get to the bottom of, ev- of everything because the bottom isn't that deep as far mm. as the uh, user is concerned. Obviously, it goes very far, much further back from you know the back end. Um, mm. But you don't, at the fundamental level, have that as much control over the base processes which is good for some people because yeah they don't want that and it's intimidating mm. and it's confusing um i've always just used windows because it's we never were able to afford a mac so that was there was never really an option uh but i like windows because yeah you do have certainly from a tech perspective you can go in deeper and you can control stuff. much more control yeah and in terms mm. of linux i wanted to learn a new operating system uh and allowed me to do that it's also better i think it's better for programming because you have ac- easier access to the command line um mm. and it's much more common to to use the command line um and android because i just prefer android you know but basically the same reasoning with windows you get a lot more customization with uh with android than you do with an iphone yeah well, that's that. <laughs> that yeah. awkward pause. Answered your, answered your question there, I think. Thank you, thank you, Tim. And greetings. Oh, greetings from UEA. Oh, t- he says, Tim, Sustverner, I'm going to say, good luck trying to pronounce that German word. Well, I gave it a stab. We have another email here from Aniela Shaw Miller. 
Uh, good morrow, young sirs. Um, just uh, <laughs> that, that reminds me of that line in, um, uh, you know, when the hobbits walk into the end of the Prancing Pony and it's good evening, little masters. Oh, right. <laughs> yeah, from uh, Ballyman Butterbur, <laughs> the best yeah. name in Lord of the Rings. Our business is our own. <laughs> All right, young sirs, I meant no offence. No offense. Talk of strange folk abroad. Can't be too careful, he says as he gets crushed by the ring rave. <laughs> yeah. Um, good morning, young sirs. Just a quick note, my owl is merely a fledgling, so I cannot burden it with too much weight. Love the podcast. Your tangents are like butterbeer. Sweet, frothy, but also rich. Keep them coming. Um, <laughs> Simon, I've watched your channel for years now, and it's been fascinating to see you grow and develop as a content creator. Upping your game in terms of gear and cameras definitely exacerbates your talent as a video maker. Oh, thank you. Also, I'm a massive fan of Dan, fellow classical studies student and Harry Potter obsessed. Obsessy? Obsessor? Uh, well, obsessed obsessy. works. It, it, it depends what you mean. Like, you can say that you are Harry Potter obsessed, implying a state. Mm. But if you say that you are a person who obsesses... Mm. I like obsessy because it looks yeah, funny. Yeah, I, I like that. Lots of... Well, two repeat... Com- uh, uh, bleh, 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 bleh. Carry on, Dan, I'm having a stroke. Question. <laughs> <laughs> If you could polyjuice potion any composer, living or dead, so that you could, um, you, so that you would have written their complete works, who would it be and why? I look forward to your answers. Anyway, thought I would send you a quick snap of my evening. Hopefully, Dan appreciates. Live long and prosper, Aniela. P.S. Dan, from what everyone is saying, perhaps we can assume gloriously liberated, gloriously liberally proud could be your epithet. <laughs> um, and don't worry about the other lack of compassion of your Gryffindor jumper seen in the vlog they're just muggles oh thanks Aniela that's good to know you, she's also you, attached a, she's attached a photo of a uh, bottle of Doom Bar and uh, Homer's The Odyssey and it's the right tra- the Richard Lattimore translation which is the, um, is the is the better translation I'm pretty convinced you're losing your mind by the way <laughs> you're just <laughs> you need to have a lie down after this I can tell I'm I mean, this is the thing. I've, this is the first time I've had, but I've had the opportunity to take the day. I have to go to a chapel choir rehearsal in the evening, um, which is going to be fun. But yeah, I don't know. I've still got some time to relax. <laughs> to answer the question about Polyjuice Potion, I, I think if you were to pick any dead composer, for example, if I was to Polyjuice into Gustav Holst, I don't think mm. people would be like, oh, wow, I love your work. They'd be like, Jesus Christ, he's back from the dead! <laughs> <laughs> like, I think I, think I do. Of- I'd, I'd like to be Elgar. Yeah, Elgar was cool. I mean, I I think Holst actually wouldn't I wouldn't mind. I mean, if I could be anybody, it'd be Bach, because mm. like a dude was a don. He he was just a machine, like a, a literally a robot for producing inspired music. And mm. the longer I listen to the Mass in B minor, the more I'm convinced that the Gloria is the single greatest piece of music ever written. Like it's just it's astonishing. Yeah, um, but yeah, I don't know. Um, living? What about living composers? Who would you like to be? <coughs> um, Paul Mealer, so you can scare the shit out of Dr. Jones. <laughs> yeah, I do love Mealer's stuff, actually. Um, oh, no, oh, obviously, I'll Eric Whitaker. Live that lifestyle. Oh, yeah, true. That's and that point. hair, that glorious, John glorious John hair. would be absolutely rolling in it all the time. Yeah. I, I suppose I should really be saying Eric's Eschenwalds. But, yeah. Hello, I wrote the Trinity Two- Tidome, and you just <laughs> wet yourself at the saying that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> And now, because we omitted it last week, we are going to return to our fan fiction. Um, mm. This week, it's the fifth instalment of the Time Traveller with the Extraordinarily Big Forehead series. Um, many, many thanks to Hannah. Sorry we couldn't read it out last week, but we're returning now, so it's going to be we're good. Le- we're she leaving says, Dear the rest Simon. of you in suspense mm. with the case oh, yeah. of the deleted pixels, because we have had the finale. And mm. I can only imagine how much tension you guys are in. Because we, we ha- we've had the email, but we haven't read it. We've been dying to read it. But yeah, we're going to have to wait one more week. And after that, do, if you, um, dear, list, dear reader, uh, could, uh, are interested in sending us some fan fiction, please do. Uh, it doesn't have to be a big story like these guys have made it into. Uh, I frankly welcome the idea of smutty, filthy, one-off stories about Dan and I, possibly as cavemen, possibly a spaceman trapped on the moon after an Apollo mission has failed and we only have each other's arms to embrace. Um, oh, yeah. And I, and I positively shudder at the thought, but let's go. Or write some Good. saucy stuff that we do in an organ loft. I don't know. But yeah, if oh, you'd yeah. like to send us some fan fiction, do do please send it to spongyelectric at gmail.com. But over Jeez. to you, Dan. Cool. Uh, she says, Dear Simon and Dan, finally I've found the time to write another chapter of everyone's second most favourite fan fiction. Oh. <laughs> she says, <laughs> You're true. doing amazing, Josh. Sit back and enjoy. Sincerely, Hannah. So, without further ado, chapter five, 
And I apologise if I cough and splutter through this. I will try my very best. I will close the email <clears throat> so that I can't help them. But this is all new to me as well. I'm, I'm leaning back, okay. leaning back in the chat. Here we go. Chapter 5. Simon dropped the plate he'd been cleaning. It shattered on the kitchen floor, but he barely noticed. He just stood in the kitchen, speechlessly looking at Daniel while trying to form a clear thought. He had to be lying, right? Time travel wasn't possible, and this weird man was just confused, so there was no reason to believe a single word he said. But to somehow... Fair, I think that's how I'd react if you just... Yeah. Of, or, or, or to be fair, if I just met somebody, like, yeah, I'm a time traveller. Like, I think yeah, a smash play like, would be the bull- least thing I'd do. <laughs> yeah. But somehow, deep down, Simon knew that the stranger was serious about this, and that he had to believe him. Or else. <coughs> nice. <laughs> oh god, I, I thought a, something really paragraph. suspenseful was about to happen. Yeah. <laughs> sir? Sir? Daniel asked, almost whimpering. Why did he think that this was a good idea? The, the man had to think he was insane, and he couldn't even blame him for it. What did he think was going to happen? He didn't find an answer to the question. How he would have reacted if someone had just thrown this sentence at him. I'm just gonna... Simon took a few careful steps backwards, trying not to cut his feet on any pl- pieces of the broken plate. I'm just gonna clean this up. So he left the kitchen to get... Just to, to backpedal a second. Did you refer to yourself in your internal monologue as Sir? No, it's Sir Sir, Daniel asked. Oh, oh, oh in the, ca- th- the character of me. Yeah. I thought that in, um, your, in the internal monologue of the character, he was just like, oh, sir, sir, what have you done? Like, you were a little nervous. No, I think it's because I've just I've just said this something and you haven't said anything. Ah. So I'm like, I, it's basically me being like, Simon? Simon? Hello? But Anyone sir, in? because I'm an, I'm an old man. He left the kitchen to get a brush. He felt overwhelmed, partly because there was a man claiming to be a time traveller standing in his kitchen, but there was more to it. I think it was only partly that. <laughs> like, yeah, I've got just other a issues bit. on my plate. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and well, like the plate, and that's the primary issue, you've just dropped it. For some reason, he just knew that Daniel wasn't lying. He could feel it. Simon wasn't able to figure out exactly how he did, but that wasn't important, because he could also sense great danger when he looked into the young man's eyes. He had this feeling before, not just in the moment he'd found out the stranger in the forest. For his entire life, he'd felt he was particularly good at figuring out what other people thought, felt, or wanted. (laughs) <laughs> Even though this ability... Oh, God. That is, oh, no. so, that is so not true. Oh, God. I am I am so emotionally retarded. I, I really am. Simon reading si- social situations. I don't know. We, we haven't told the New Year's story. One day we will, but my God. Oh, oh that was hilarious. Oh. Come on. That was not... Oh, yeah, not for me. Not for oh, me. Nothing bad happened. Uh, I thankfully think, not. I, I think if your daughter is that fit, you realise... I don't think it was news to her. Please, let's not. Let's not. (laughs) Okay, returning, returning quickly to the story. Even though this ability had been of good use throughout his life, he never thought of it as something special or unique. He just assumed that he was a little more sensitive than most other people, but he wasn't so sure about that now. What if... What if it was some kind of superpower? Okay, he was exaggerating it. Oh, f- fuck. Fuck. <laughs> Just read the fucking words. I think you're right. I think I need to have a lie down. I'm not well. Um, okay, let's try again. <clears throat> what if... What if it was some kind of superpower? Okay, he was exaggerating a bit, but maybe Simon actually had some special ability that other humans didn't have. Assuming that Daniel was telling the truth, the existence of something like that would probably not surprise him too much. He went back into the kitchen. I I wouldn't be surprised if I turned out to be a superhero. I suspected, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. (laughs) That time I made the glass disappear in the the serpentarium. He went back into the kitchen, determined to find out more about the stranger's history. So, how did you end up here? I mean, now. You don't think I'm insane? Daniel asked, feeling more relieved than than ever before. He didn't even want to imagine what would have happened if Simon had called the police. I believe you, for now. My name is Daniel Moore. I was born in 1857 and I'm 18 years old. F*** you. My father is a doctor. (laughs) But he... I haven't lived with him for the past five years. We've never really had a good relationship, so I'm living with my aunt and cousins now. We don't have a lot of money, but at least we have a place to live and I don't have to starve or freeze to death in the corner of some street in London. Jesus, at least? Yeah, Yeah. me. What a horrible (laughs) life. You're a a Dickensian (laughs) character. (laughs) <laughs> my father lives there, and all the diseases he used to talk about sounded horrible. Like most doctors, he only treats rich people. 
He's a very expensive doctor, so most poor, most poor people aren't able to afford to seeing, seeing him. Hashtag America. Hashtag America. Most of them just die. It's frightening <laughs> to even think about. <laughs> oh my I god. That, I sound like the most heartless... Most of them just die. die. It's frightening to even think about. just can't afford to stay alive. Curb the excess population. <laughs> His voice started to shiver. Simon was listening, being shocked, yet interested. What about your mother? <laughs> Simon was listening, being shocked. He was like, yeah. I'm listening. <laughs> <laughs> what about your mother? She died during... The young man started to tear, started tearing up. She died while giving birth to me. My father, he blames me for killing her. He oh thinks that I'm cursed. He thinks that's the reason. Jesus Christ, what's <laughs> happened to this story? Hannah, are you okay? Are you feeling all right? Oh my, my God. God. Good heavens I'm above. not letting you get anywhere near me with a crossbow. Jesus Christ. Nice reference though. Very good, Game of Thrones. Come on, everyone. Round of applause for Simon. Do it to myself. He started Wanker. sobbing unable to hold back his tears any longer. Without finishing his sentence, he started to cry uncontrollably. For a few seconds, Simon just stood next to him, not sure what to do, but then... This is you, reading a social situation, <laughs> just watching. But then he wrapped his arms around the tiny stranger and gently started patting his soft hair. Oh, no. Daniel, re- um, Daniel rested his head against the saviour's chest, finally feeling safe in his strong arms. The two men remained like this, and for a moment, the world didn't feel like such a bad place anymore. Aww. What Simon and Dan didn't know was that soon this feeling would be nothing but a memory of a time that seemed so far away that they could do nothing but look back on it and wonder if they ever would be able to feel this way again. Ooh. To be continued. Ooh. Ooh, gathering, Ooh. Gathering storm clouds. Wow. Yeah, crikey. I've got to say, this is, that, that, that was a roller coaster ride from mm. what the fuckery <laughs> to horror to... It oh, escalated very quickly. Yeah. Bloody hell. Crikey. Well, well, thank you, Hannah. Thank you for that cheerful story. I've got to say, Hannah, you, I really do love this one. I'm very excited to see. Like, we've the, the, the board is set. The pieces are now moving. And we come to it at last. The great fan fiction of our time. <coughs> for God's sake, stop me. coughing! <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm not well. Right. Let's wrap up this shit show before you can infect okay. me over, over <laughs> Facebook call. <laughs> So, Daniel, what have we learned today? Well, we started talking about uh, Segway Incorporated, which was one hell of a segue. Hey. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, we had a brief chat about his, the inventor. Um, it turns out that he's the son of... Was it? He was a comic book guy, wasn't it? Uh, yeah, it was a cool family. I can't remember what his brother did. Mm. Or, or no, no. Was it his brother or was it his dad? It was his dad. Okay. Dean Carmen. Yeah, that was his name. He's the son of Jack Carmen, illustrator for Mad Wit Science. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> for a um, we had a chat about the Wikicast. There's very little Wikipedia in this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, we spoke about Even Song, Symphonic Even Song. Yeah, we talked about the uh, the guy who um, bought the um, Segway company died by driving a Segway off a cliff, and then we talked about death for quite a while. Yeah, we did for a long time. And then talking about wiping God. our asses with baby wipes. Uh, well, again, just high caliber stuff. Really, you know, the fifty cattle of a uh, mm. of podcasts. And then following that, we had a a uh, correspondence corner, which was all over the place, but I think mostly very positive about us. Mm. Which I'm a big fan. I'd say of. so. Yeah. And uh, and then we uh, started summarising the podcast. Mm. And, and now uh, we're here. Started from well. the bottom. Hi, how are you doing? Good, good to see you. <laughs> Nice to meet you. I'm I'm here. I'm Simon with Coffee McCockface. Yeah, cough hi. I'm face. Coffee McCockface. <laughs> I definitely said cockface. Ah, <laughs> uh, Freud. Where are you? Oh dear. Okay. Oh dear. Ooh. That's all for this week's episode. Don't forget to subscribe to us on your podcasting service of choice. You can like us on Facebook, and if you'd like to see our faces, check out our YouTube channel, Spongy and Electric. Smutty fan fiction, Blade Runner 2049 reviews, and other thoughts on the show can be sent to us at spongyelectric at gmail.com. We'd love to hear from you. Join us again for another tumble down the wiki rabbit hole. And we'll see see you you next time. time. Oh, f*** me. Oh, we sound like we sound like such pretentious wankers going through our like if we ever release this at the end of a podcast going through the correspondence just being like oh for fuck's sake hey, these guys oh, get to the point up. you twat <laughs> like, <laughs> 
We love all people who write to us, just to let all, you know. All people. We love all people, especially if you write to us. And especially if you say Simon, then Dan. Bye.